I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good to be in the presence of God, worshiping our risen Savior this morning. If you are visiting us for the first time, we welcome you in the name of the Lord. And please feel at home. The presence of God is here this morning to minister to you. And uh, condolences to Sister Rosa for your loss. We'll be praying for you. And uh, as a church, you know, just uphold Sister Rosa in our prayers. <clears throat> so I just wanted to, you hear, heard from Pastor George Vargas. He's uh, going for a mission trip the seventh year, Pastor. It's the eighth time. So remember, this man of God has been with Agape Church from the very beginning. He invested a lot of time for the church. You know, his Bible study is great. He committed daily to teach you from the word of God. So I just wanted you to pray for him and support him with your financial blessing. You know, you cannot go to Philippines now. Anybody want to go with him? So you can go with him, but please support him. And Pastor will be praying for you. And may the man of God get a wonderful trip and many souls will be saved. Uh, for the glory of God. So we will be praying for you. Uh, just to hear all the announcements and we are preparing for so many things. God is going to do great and mighty things in our life. And we are serving a powerful God, an awesome God. And uh, everything is possible with God. How many of you believe that? Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> this morning I just wanted to speak about freedom in Christ. Freedom in Christ. Christ. How many of you love freedom? We want freedom in our life. That is freedom through Jesus Christ is very unique. Freedom means the state of not being imprisoned or enslaved. That means we are free. You know, Jesus Christ came to this world to set us free. Hallelujah. The Bible says in John chapter 8, 36, Therefore, if the Son of Man sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you believe that this morning? The Lord has given you freedom. It sets you free from every bondage and entanglement for you to enjoy the freedom that is available in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Galatians 5.1 in NIV version says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Hallelujah. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. So the Bible says, you know, the devil come and bring you bondage in your life. He won't let you be free. But Jesus said, I came to set you free. I have given you the freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning we are here to enjoy the freedom that is available for a child of God through the word of God. Isaiah chapter 61, 1 says, you know, that is the prophet was proclaiming about Jesus Christ. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Jesus said, I came for a purpose, to set you free from your bondage, from your difficulty, from your burden, from your suffering. When Jesus came to the temple in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, he took the same scripture portion and proclaimed, I am the freedom giver. I am the deliverer. He said, he read the same scripture, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. 
child of God, the spirit of the Lord is upon your life. Because he has anointed you and he has anointed Jesus to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind. You are no longer in blindness because the Lord has opened your mind and your understanding and he has set the liberty those who are oppressed. You know, Jesus came to change your position, to change your direction, and change your course of action. How many of you believe that? Jesus came to change my position. He wants you to go to the next level. He wants you to have a new direction in your life. He wants you to have a new course of action. He can turn your mourning into dancing. Are you mourning this morning? For anything. I know that some of you are weeping. Rosa is weeping. And you know, we, she, God can take your mourning and he can turn into a dancing. Psalm 30 verse 11 says, you, you have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. Hallelujah. Only God can do that. He can put on the cloth of joy and gladness. You know, we don't stitch a cloth with sackcloth, right? Sackcloth is heavy. We cannot carry with a, with a heavy cloth. And, you know, we don't make cloth with sack. But Jesus said, he will remove our burden. And he will put on the joy and gladness in, your, in our life. Jesus took all our burden. This morning we partake from the Holy Communion. Isaiah 53 verse 4 and 5 says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. By his stripes we are healed. Healing has been already proclaimed here by the Lord Jesus Christ. And you don't need to worry about your sickness or, or problems. And Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17, when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirit with a word and healed all who were sick. Everybody say, all who were sick. Hallelujah. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying he himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. Hallelujah. Jesus came to reverse the handwriting contrary to us. You know, there is a handwriting contrary to a child of God. You know, what is the plan of God for us? It is described in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. God's plan is for us to, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Hallelujah. To give you a future and hope. That is the plan of God for you and me. To give you a future. Give you a hope. And God is going to do that for our life. But John chapter 10, 10. There is a devil that is trying to come and write. You know, contrary to the God's promise. This morning, we need to understand the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and that they may, that they may have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. This morning, Agape Church, 
We are proclaiming life in the abundance. And devil cannot come, steal, kill, or destroy, and touch your life. And you are covered under the wings of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Colossians 2, 13 through 15. It says, and you being dead in your trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven all our trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirement that was against us, which was contrary to us. He's talking about the purpose of Jesus Christ. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Hallelujah. Jesus took all the handwriting that was contrary to us, that was against his plan, against his hope, and he nailed it at the cross of Calvary, having disarmed all the principalities, the powers, and he made a uh, public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Hallelujah. Triumph is through Christ Jesus. You know, when Moses was born, he had a handwriting written against his life by Pharaoh. There was no way that Moses could be alive. There was a handwriting against his life. What was the handwriting? Exodus chapter 122. So Pharaoh commanded all his people saying, every son who is born, you shall cast into the river. And every daughter, you shall save alive. That was the handwriting against Moses. It was contrary for, towards his life. Nobody thought that there is a chance for Moses. But God supernaturally reversed that handwriting, that decree against Moses' life and put Pharaoh's daughter as Moses' caregiver. Hallelujah! Amen. Jesus, God, can change the handwriting that is contrary to our life. This morning, let the Lord say the last word. Let the Lord speak for us. He said, I am the life I came to give, life in abundance. Hallelujah! Our God is a powerful God. Remember when Joseph the dreamer, the father loved him so much and he gave a coat of many colors. But one day, the dad sent him to visit his brothers. But when they saw Joseph, they said, the dreamer is coming. Let us kill him. That was the handwriting against Joseph. There is a handwriting contrary to our life. When you are a promised person, when you are a promised child of God, when the Lord has got a plan for your life, the enemy will use his weapon to take the blessing and your handwriting the Lord has written for you. And there they wrote, Joseph need to die. They put a plot. They put him in a, in, in a, in a well. But God supernaturally orchestrated to take him to the palace. That is God. This morning, are you worried? Are you struggling in your life? Are you questioning God? No. He came to give you freedom. He is for us to give us the victory. This morning, child of God, victory is ours. Hallelujah. They said to one another, look, this dreamer is coming. They said, come therefore. Let us now kill him and cast him into some pit. And we shall say, some wild beast will devote him. 
and we shall see what will become of his prey Devil wanted to destroy your dream. You have a dream for God this morning. You have a dream for your life. You have a dream for the gospel. They will say, "Come, let us destroy the dream." The dream is given by the Lord. the lord will never allow the dream to be destroyed and joseph is the ruler he is not in the pit anymore he is controlling the finance and the structure of israel when destruction comes god lifted this same man his own brothers wrote a handwriting in his life god He is a God of reversal. God is a God of reversal. He is going to reverse certain things this morning for you. When abortion was predominating in this country, the Lord gave the wisdom to some doctors. to find out a abortion reversal pill that saved a lot of children there is a pill that reverses abortion chinese knows about it chinese serve as a board member of the heartbeats international there is a god who can reverse things for you do you think things are not going in order do you think god cannot stand for you oh god is an awesome god it's a privilege to serve him it is a privilege to taste and see how good our god is child of god i want you to be strong in the lord and committing to him totally irrespective of what kind of you know handwriting the devil can bring in your life the lord will stand for you and he will nail every handwriting that is coming against your life your health your wealth your family your children your community god is going to stand for you and me this morning hallelujah we are serving a powerful god we are serving a god with no compromise this morning the spirit of the lord is strengthening me very powerfully to speak from the word of god with authority a new anointing is coming into this church this church is not going to be the same anymore when you come into the sanctuary you will be consumed by the fire of god Amen. and people will come from all parts of the world to receive healing and deliverance and breakthrough that's a prophecy from the lord this is going to be a house of miracles hmm? this is going to be a house of miracles hallelujah yeah. today i was i was uh, listening that song house of miracle when you lift the name of jesus when you praise him when you worship him it is going to be a different place it is going to be a house of miracle signs and wonders will happen here it doesn't matter who is preaching here 
every one of you will be anointed by the power of the holy spirit this is a house of miracle i proclaim that amen god reversed the life of joseph you know in our car you know there is a reverse gear how many of you know that how many of you know that we have a reverse gear in our car some of you never use that <laughs> everybody want to go forward no reverse it is for a purpose we use the reverse gear for different purposes is it not some of you have never used the reverse gear <laughs> sometimes the reverse is for a correction you know if you park the car in a in a uh, abrupt way sudden way it is you know we have to do a lot of adjustment if you drive an suv you have a small parking you have to struggle a lot it is a reversal for correction it is a reversal for correction You know, sometimes God will give certain reversal for correcting our life. Remember the life of Jacob. He started as a deceiver. He deceived his father. He deceived his brother. And he was running for his life. His mother said, son, run. Your life will be in danger. He was running. but god caught him bethel he had an experience he saw heaven is opened the angels are coming up and down he changed his life he wrestled with god it was a lot of adjustment and reversal correcting adjustment in his life finally the lord asked him son Are you still Jacob? What's your name? He said, I'm still Jacob. No change. I tried a lot of reversal. I struggled. But the Lord said, I knew. You tried. You reversed many times. Now I'm going to take your life. I'm going to change your name to Israel. You are no more deceived. You are no more a crooked person. You are my son. I have seen you try to reverse your life, to adjust your life. So the first thing is a reversal for a correction. If you are trying to correct your life, ask the Lord to come into our life and get it done for us. The second thing is reversal for a turning back sometimes we reverse the car to turn back go some different direction is it not you know we made a mistake we reverse the car and find another route and go jonah's life jonah did some reversal for correction god asked him to go and preach and he found is a, a safe place to go jopa instead of nineve god corrected him you know he reversed for a correction he spent time in the fish belly and he got his dead back time is already up the last reversal is for a new direction three kinds of reversal i said god is a god of reversal Saul was a cruel man. He was a blasphemer. He was a killer of Jesus' followers. But the Damascus road, Jesus met him. It was for a new direction in his life. That reversal changed the universe. Hallelujah. This morning, 
children of God. What is the Holy Spirit is speaking to us? There is freedom in Christ Jesus. There is freedom through Jesus Christ. He came to set us free. Set the captive free. And if the Son of God set you free, you are free indeed. Hallelujah. This morning, let us enjoy the freedom that is available for you and me.